of you have one of these, or several? Uh -huh. And uh, seriously, if you forgot one at home, I have backups for you because I don't want anybody to go through serious withdrawal or panic attacks. But real honestly, how many of you spend more time interacting with this device than you do with your loved ones, your partners, your children? Be honest with your children. And you know, some of you are cheaters. You're cheaters. I've seen you in restaurants when you pretend to be present at a hot date, remember? And under the table, you're scrolling. Have you seen people like that? And, and you know what's really sad? Don't do this. Because with our children, so many parents, and especially after they're under the age of five, are giving this to their kids as a convenient babysitter, and you're doing brain damage. Don't do it. But you know, it looks innocent, doesn't it? And the fact is that, in fact, one of my books is on bullying. With cyberbullying, this cute little device turns into a weapon. And it can be lethal. But you know, over most of Americans are actually addicted to this. It's called digital dopamine addiction. And no addiction is good because it steals our freedom. But I'm not here to bash AI or technology. I mean, I have tomatoes thrown at me. But, you know, I think we, I, I'm really here more to reclaim the brain so that technology serves us and doesn't enslave us. Does that make sense? Yeah, and Stephen Hawking, you probably have all heard of him, the, the scientist, he said, AI may be the best thing that ever happened to us, it might be the worst thing, and it could be the last thing if we're not careful. So can we collectively agree that we're gonna make it the next thing? You like that? Yeah, and I'm gonna give an example of where the co-mingling of the creative mind and technology work together. Um, it's July 27th, is that right, Grace? <laughs> 2022, and my granddaughter, who happens to be here, um, is, oh, have you ever been to Jackson Hole, Wyoming? It's God's country, isn't it? And she's cruising along in her side by side. It's like a souped up, um, what is it called? Like, kind of looks like a golf cart. She's going down the road and, you know, the sun's shining, the mountains yonder, eagles overhead. And she said it was the best day of her life. Freeze that. Back in Davidson, North Carolina, her parents are startled in the middle of the night with that hollow knock on the door. How many of you have gotten the phone call, the door that you don't want to answer, especially when half the Davidson Police Department's out there, and they announce that that wonderful day ended suddenly in tragedy as her unconscious body lay in the ditch, fortunately found by a park ranger who had her airlifted to the University of Utah Trauma Center. The doctor comes out, and the diagnosis is internal decapitation. Sound ugly? It is. And it, listen to this, in research, most of the people never made it, but she's, she's alive. And those who made it were paralyzed. So it's a, a little bit of a scary story, but I, I'm back home, and so I go on, uh, what is it called, social media, and I ask for prayers. And this is an example of good use of technology. It went viral. There were people in every state of the union praying for girl grace. They had never met her. And I remember my pastor praying that the hand of God would guide the surgeon's hand. And get this, in the middle of surgery, he stops as he's about to fuse her neck to prevent paralysis. He stops. And you know what he does? He has a Zoom call. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's says use or abuse. And he brings on the best surgeons in the country from NYU, from uh, Stanford. And here's the creative powers of mind. They come up with a plan B. And it worked. He comes out after the surgery and says, it's a miracle. Now I'm going to start crying. <laughs> and... Um, it's a, and that's not a medical term. That's not a medical term. Now, let's look at the other side of this. Ever since screen time has increased, there's a direct correlation between the increase in screen time and our intelligence going downhill. 
between 1975 and the year 2000, do you know that our intelligence went down 13.7 points? That's a lot. And if we do that one more time, we will be borderline intelligence. And I will tell you right now, there is not a democracy in this world that can be supported by stupidity. But you know, maybe what we have to do is put a little more energy into improving natural stupidity rather than artificial intelligence. So the other thing that concerns me <clears throat> is that there has been a decrease in EQ. That's emotional intelligence, it's relationships, emotions. And I guess my concern is if common sense were so common, why wouldn't we see more of it? Have you noticed that? I mean, have you hired someone lately? It's pretty scary. And then we have Mr. Clueless. Now, maybe if he works smarter rather than harder, he's going to figure out how to open that dang door. And then we have Carl's glass bottom bus. But no, no customers. You know, it worked well for boats, didn't it? And so when we're looking at this, I do corporate training and and this is backed by research, about 10 to 20% of the workforce is actually competent, and that's before the silent quitters. Just up the road, a company, one out of three passed the drug test. So we're already eliminating, you know, it's almost 70% of the workforce that we might have. And this is scary to me, 28% of human error is due to direct distractions on this little cute device. And I'm telling you, if I'm ready to take off at Charlotte Douglas, I don't want my, I don't want my mechanic distracted if it's going to increase the error rate of 28%. So I take it a little bit seriously. But there's one other thing. I have a healthcare background. And with screen time, mental health issues have increased. Anxiety is up. You know that. Depression is up, suicide is up, um, fentanyl overdoses is up, obesity is up, mass shootings are up. I mean, listen to the news. And now the number one cause of death in our kids, our little kids and our teens, as you know what it is, it's guns. Is this, I mean, yeah, I grew up in a different world. And, and so I think, you know, the bottom line is, People aren't happy. We're doing something wrong. And, and we, I'm here to fix it. <laughs> I'm going to take it on myself. And I know, you're going to say good luck, huh? But let's look at social media. You know, um, I think there's a good use of it. But if you think for a moment that uh, TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, if you think those are philanthropic organizations, come again. Google makes $256 per person per year, and that's including people like me that don't touch it, and maybe you too. So there is a, definitely a product. But those platforms, get this, they are designed specifically to addict you, to create an addiction, and they are succeeding at it very, very well. And the addiction is dopamine. Now, dopamine is not bad. Um, it's actually, it's a neurotransmitter that's released by the brain, and it's why people climb greater mountains. It's what the Olympians do. It's actually a motivator. It's, it's a pleasurable feeling. You know, when you get a good hug, it's a reward system. But when the reward is this and only this, it really creates a problem because all we're doing is taking in more and more information. And there's no output. Kids are inside. They're not outside riding their bike or playing volleyball. Where are they? They're back taking more and more information. And it's a system overload on our bodies, and a very serious one. It creates a serious stress reaction, and we call it infobesity. Our brains can't filter it fast enough. And so the limbic system goes into play, it becomes a dominant force. That is our emotional brain and our instinctual brain, you know, fight, flight, freeze. And it creates a short circuit in our brain, it's called a brain hack, where we are deleting the neocortex, let's just call it the wise mind. And it's where we have creative thinking, rational thinking, um, processing, you know, where we make the right decision, and it's dying. Because we're not using it, it's like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. 
Just this last week, how many of you have heard the news? Somebody brings a doorbell, the wrong doorbell, and gets shot. A girl goes up the wrong driveway, and she's dead. And right here in Charlotte, a little girl's ball runs into the neighbor's yard, and the guy shoots her. And the reason I'm explaining it to you now is that we have this explosive and impulsive behavior because we're in fight, flight, freeze, instead of processing things and putting a little bit of rational thinking with it. So I'm going to ask you a question with this simple device. Um, would you give a toddler a, a line of cocaine or, or heroin? Not, not a toddler, anybody. <laughs> I see some of you under here. <laughs> um, hopefully not. But do you know that on brain scans, the dopamine that we're getting from this looks very similar to a hit of heroin and cocaine. It's causing brain damage. And I hope you take that seriously because, because it is. So anyway, I'm going to share with you, let's go to a more positive note, the five C's. Um, and, and this is what makes us uniquely human, and one is consciousness. I don't think a robot will ever have awareness. And, you know, there's altered states of consciousness. In fact, Brenton was talking about that earlier. But what consciousness, and some of us go into yoga and, and mindfulness, and we go into altered states where it leads into creativity. And creativity, let me tell you, there would be no AI Without it, right? It's this that even brought it into the world. And being a brain trainer, the best way to break a habit and create new behaviors is visualization, mental imagery, hypnosis, neuroplasticity, where we create new neural pathways in the brain. And I even tell people what you need to do is challenge your kids with healthy boredom. How many times if your kids are bored, oh, you hand them a phone, push button love, instant success. No, have your kids look deep inside to find that the magic to these answers are within them. And the third one is, is connect. I mean, we live in a world, do these kids look like they're happy? Whatever happened to the lost art of laughter? And, um, you know, it, it scares me because I can tell you, if some of you, did you see Castaway's Tom Hanks? He had a stronger relationship with Wilson, a volleyball, than these kids are having with each other. And unfortunately, it's, it's true. And, um, you know, and there was a, a recent study out of the University of New Hampshire. And um, this is a little scary. Loneliness is a, it's a greater health risk a greater health risk than smoking 15 cigarettes. That doesn't mean you go back to smoking. I'm not suggesting that. But that does say something. So what I'm asking you to do is be present. When somebody is talking, put this down and listen. You just may save a life. And the fourth one is challenge. This is where we get healthy dopamine. Um, it's why Tom Brady can't quit football. It's nothing about the ball. It's about the dopamine he gets when he throws the ball well. Why did he finally quit? Because he's not throwing the ball as well anymore, and it's easier to let go of it. And, um, you know, it's, it's Eric Weinmayer, the blind man climbing Mount Everest. He's blind. It wasn't for the view. It's the process of overcoming and becoming more than you ever thought possible. And I'm going to tell you, as I stand here, I am having a flood of dopamine. And you know, it says, don't tell anyone, but for me, speaking is better than sex. <laughs> but you know what? I don't have anything to compare it to. So, <laughs> so anyway, you know, um, the last or the fourth is, is, um, the, the fifth is, is challenge. And we, it's like the potter's hand, you know? We get to shape it. Will AI help us or hurt us? It's the action that we take. We have a choice. Computers don't have a choice. Let me, but we've been programmed to passivity. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would give me a dollar for this $20 bill? It's a good ROI. Would anybody do it? You know, but you recognize the opportunity, but not one of you came up and did it. We've got to get back. 
Thank God it's my last dollar, okay? <laughs> but so we have to get back into being, you know, just engaged and, and going to our happy place. My goodness, we recharge this phone. Why don't we recharge this? Whether it's nature, whether it's the majesty of the mountains, the, the serenity of the lake, the, the drama of the ocean, the quiet woods, take the time to recharge. That's what will actually save it. But, you know, the bottom line is, it's like the surgeon that day. He, he exercised all five of these. This is grace just weeks after that horrendous but wonderful day. So all of us can make miracles happen if we intermingle technology with the creative powers of mind. And if I look at the brain, and it excites me, I think you can tell that, I, you know, and I often wonder if we would turn it into an app, I bet people would start using it more. <laughs> and, and so I look at it, and you know what? I, I see hope that there will be another Beethoven, there will be another Einstein, right? There will be, I do too. Um, there, I, I, I see potential, but only if you and I are programming it. And number three, I see possibility, yep, that breakthrough thinking and innovation will continue to be the currency of the future. And if we embrace it, that is only if you accept the challenge, if you accept the challenge to focus a little less on making AI better and a little bit more on making an AI making us better and more compassionate to serve humanity well. And let me just share with you, because I think my whole message is so well summed up in the words of Lakota Sioux. Listen, my children, for when you were born, you cried, and the world rejoiced. But when you die, may they cry, and may you rejoice. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.